Copycat Face Cast. In today's tutorial, we're going to cover the process of a face cast using Copycat Silicone. But more importantly, we're mainly going to focus on how to work around nostrils and get a really good set of nostrils right out of the mold. And this is using a technique that was originally printed in Prosthetics Magazine issue three. So if you have the, some back issues of Prosthetics Magazine, definitely check out uh, issue three and follow along. Now, quick overview about copycat silicone. This is a self-releasing formula of silicone that we had formulated to mimic the properties of prosthetic grade cream. So it's a nice smooth formula that can also be thinned down a little bit if necessary with uh, silicone fluid. And in addition to releasing from skin without a release, it will also release from hair without release. Now, real important, I wouldn't exceed about half inch length hair. My beard was about a half inch long when I did this, and that does slow down the demolding process. But as far as eyebrows and eyelashes go, it releases beautifully from facial hair. So that, of course, makes cleanup a lot easier for your model. Now, if your model does have hair, it's really important to mask it using a vinyl bald cap. And it must be a vinyl bald cap because Copycat is a platinum silicone and it will be inhibited by latex bald caps. Now, this first layer we're putting on, we're going to do this in two layers. And this first layer, we're using around 20% silicone fluid. And you can adjust that to your liking. And the whole point of that is to make that easier to apply. So if you're doing a large cast and you want to move really fast, sometimes that addition of silicone fluid really speeds things up a lot. You want to be careful, though, not to go too heavy with the silicone fluid because uh, working around the face, around the nose and mouth, that can be a little tricky. So you don't want it too drippy, but uh, this does make it a lot easier to spread onto a vertical surface. Now you'll notice I'm moving around his face, almost forming like a cowl before I move into the nostril area. And that's really important because you don't want any silicone around the nose area until you're ready to really focus all of your attention on that point of the cast. Now what I'm going to do is as soon as I've got that everything ready to go to attack the nose, I'm going to get the have John inhale and hold his breath. You see him holding his breath there. And then while he's holding his breath, I'm going to go right around his nostrils. And then I'm going to have him expel his the air, his breath he's holding through his nostrils and push out any of that silicone. This is where you want to be ready to clear his nostrils if necessary. But you see that allows me to get right up in there and actually get where the, uh, the nostril curves back into the inside of his nose. Now this method does take some practice and most importantly it takes some prep with your model of explaining the process to them obviously before they're covered in silicone. So real important to rehearse this ahead of time, make sure they know exactly what to expect because the whole life casting process is really a lesson in the expectations of the model. Uh, managing that and managing the model and keeping them calm throughout the entire process. So for those of you new to this, I definitely recommend before you start live casting go to the links in the video description and I have a link to our live casting page on our website and there's a lot more video resources there than we have on YouTube so definitely check that out now here I'm following up with a second batch and this is a smaller batch I think I mixed up uh, a little under a pound for the second batch all told this took about three pounds of silicone but uh, this second batch does not have silicone fluid in it. I wanted a thick, trowelable consistency, and I'm using this to just level out the outside of the cast. And again, because of the timing of the set of this silicone, you can move very fast. So it allows you, in the time it takes to get over to the workbench and mix up another batch, the first batch is already set well enough that you can easily come back with that follow-up coat. So again, remember this is designed to mimic alginate. And with, of course, the benefit of having a cast that you don't have to worry about it uh, having to cast into it immediately. And, of course, it being silicone means it's reusable and, of course, can accept a lot bigger variety of casting materials. So here I'm just going in and uh, thickening up some of the thin areas. 
and also working right around the nose again with that stir stick to just clean everything up and you want that as smooth as possible on the outside of the cast because later on since this is a mold that you will reuse over and over you want that silicone to fit into that plaster banded shell without snagging on the little drips and undulations of the alginate. Now, one of the side effects to this being a self-releasing silicone is it does have a lower tear strength than our other silicones. But the benefit to that is if, heaven forbid, you had to abort a cast halfway through, you could easily tear this off. Now, it's still going to take some work to tear it. It's not flimsy like you would have with an alginate mold, but uh, real important there that it does put a lot of your models at ease knowing that they can get out a lot easier than they would with a silicone mold. And that's a real important detail. When you're working with uh, subjects that haven't been molded before, it's really good for them to know that uh, once the mold starts, they're not stuck inside. And for uh, claustrophobic subjects, that's a real important detail uh, for them to know. Now here I'm going back with a popsicle stick and just cleaning up the edges. And now I'm ready to apply my plaster bandage shell. Now I'm just going to do a quick overview of this process. So again, those of you new to this, definitely check the links in the video description because in addition to the products, I'm most importantly going to link to our video library. And we have a, a huge selection of live casting videos there that you can watch for free on our website uh, that are not available on the regular YouTube. So definitely check that out. Now, Plaster bandages. This is one of those things that a lot of times people starting out life casting will grab some plaster bandages from the hobby store and there is profound and total sadness when they go to use those bandages in this fashion. So real important to understand that these are a very different grade of plaster bandage than what you typically find in hobby stores. They're not more expensive, but they're more typically exclusive to the uh, medical community. So you want to make sure you're using good, high quality fast setting plaster bandages. And the bandages on our website, again, they're not expensive, but they are difficult to find. They're something not typically available uh, on the consumer market. Now, all of these bandages are layered at least three layers thick, sometimes four for critical areas. And you'll notice all those key areas where the bandages terminate, I folded the edge back so I don't have those little frayed edges hanging down in the subject's nose or on the edge of the cast. Because again, you want a nice tidy mold because ultimately this will be a reusable mold. This is not going to be a production mold per se, but you want a nice tidy mold that will work well in your workshop and you don't wind up with those little strings of uh, plaster material hanging off of it. So you'll notice there everywhere where the uh, plaster bandage comes to an edge, I'm turning that back, folding it lengthwise to create that nice uniform edge and just makes it for a tidier cast and more importantly, a more comfortable cast around any areas where, uh, again, some of those little frayed areas might come in contact with the model. A little dangly string of plaster material hanging in some front of someone's nose can really uh, irritate them during a cast, so just FYI. Now you'll notice that I'm leaving the nose more open than I typically do with an alginate cast. Usually I do that little uh, folded strip of bandage material that runs right down the middle of the nose to protect it during the casting process. Now we're not going to do that here because again we're going to use that technique I mentioned earlier. This is a Neil Gordon technique from Prosthetics Magazine issue 3. And for that technique to work, we actually want a fair amount of space right around the nose. And again, unlike a, uh, an alginate cast, this silicone is fairly firm, so we don't have to worry about that just caving in on itself or collapsing. Now, once I've applied my bandage shell, I'm ready to go back and trim off any excess silicone. And that just, of course, makes that uh, removal a lot cleaner. We don't have to worry about little frayed edges, again, falling around or getting tangled up in the removal process. And because we don't have to use any mold release and because this is self-releasing, I can just have John take in a breath through his nose and blow it out through his mouth, as you see there, and it will very easily release. I've actually had a few torso casts where the models were telling me that the silicone was literally falling off of them by the end of the cast. So um, it releases very well. But So you want to be ready for that and know that it's not going to stick the way you would uh, have with a silicone that uh, requires release. 
Now that we've demolded our cast, you see our nostril holes there. And even without doing any special work, we have a really nice clean nose. But we're going to take that a step further and fill those nostrils in. Now, one of the tricks to filling in the nostrils, to making sure those uh, get, we get those really clean, is to mix up a plug of alginate. So here we're using just a fast setting alginate. Uh, I think I was actually using the old 270D for this, which unfortunately that product is not around anymore, but you could use the uh, AccuCast 380 or the 590. The main reason I like to use the faster setting formulas is as you'll see here in a minute, you want this to kick off while it's still flowing because if it takes too long, you're gonna have to keep scooping up alginate and recycling it into the top of the mold. But what you're doing is having uh, someone hold the mold out as I'm having John do here, and then you're filling up the inside of the face, pouring a little puddle of alginate. And again, if you have fast setting alginate, the intent is that it's, as it starts to leak out, it literally sets up as it's coming out the nose. And once it sets up, it leaves those little drips hanging out of the nose. Now this is about uh, four minutes later or so, and we're working in a cold environment, but it's still set up pretty fast. And now you see the little drippies hanging out of John's uh, nose cast. We're going to just carefully tear those off, taking care not to pull too much out. And now we're going to pull out that alginate plug. And again, what that's going to give us is a basically a stopper, a big plug for the inside of John's face so that we can do our work on the nose and without accidentally pushing silicone into the cast. And that'll make a little bit more sense here in a minute. But there's John's face in alginate and now ready to clean up his nose. Now remember, whatever you do to this nose, it will look just like that when you pull it out of the finished cast. So take care not to cut away too much or leave too much behind. You wanna remove just enough that you get that nostril exactly the way you want it to be in each cast. And because you're working on a positive, it's a lot easier to see how that will look. So again, we're just going in, removing that alginate out of John's nose so that we actually get a negative instead of uh, filled in nostrils. And remember, it will look exactly the way it does on that alginate plug in the finished cast. So take care to do it right. And once we've got that done, we're ready to reassemble our mold and put that alginate plug back inside the mold. And remember, anytime you're working with alginate, you wanna move fast because alginate is water-based and it will start to dry out and shrink. So we wanna make sure we do this quickly. And we also wanna make sure we do this when the cast is new. Right after you remove the life cast mold, that's going to be the best time to get new silicone to bond to the previous layers of silicone. So again, we want to situate that right back in the mold. And you'll see it lines right back up because again, that's where it originated. And now we've mixed up a small batch of copycat silicone. I think this was maybe 40 grams that we mixed up here. And I've already applied some of that before the video started. But you'll see we're pushing that in, scooping that out and pushing it into those nostrils. And that way it actually goes up into those negative spaces in the nostrils. And you don't wanna to go too crazy making those nostrils too deep because you don't want a situation where you've got these long tentacles of silicone that you're trying to pull out of the uh, cast every time because those will tear off if you make them too long. But you want enough that you suggest that the right shape of the nose and that just results in a much better quality nose cast. And you'll notice I'm building kind of a plug with that. You can almost make a key for that. And you'll see, again, Neil Gordon covered this in extensively in issue three of Prosthetics Magazine, which we might still have a few of those back issues left. But those of you who have issue three, definitely check that out. I think he showed this technique with both uh, life form silicone as well as with an alginate mold. Now the copycat sets fast, so within about 10 or 15 minutes, ready to pull that out and start casting into our finished mold. So there we have a nice clean uh, set of nostrils ready for casting. Now for the sake of this video, I had some hydrocal sitting around and we just poured up just a uh, part of John's face, just so you can see the end results. 
Uh, we didn't bother pouring it all the way up to the ears here, but uh, this will give you a good idea as to what kind of results you'll get. So here I just poured in some hydrocal and I'm using my hand to work that into the detail and just to make sure we get the lips and the nose really good and we don't have any air bubbles trapped around the eyelids. And then we're going to add the rest of our hydrocal and let that set up. And again, can't stress enough, this is a very quick overview of this part of the life casting process. So those of you starting out with this, definitely check the links in the video description. I know I'm sounding like a broken record, but uh, we have a lot of resources on our life casting page and our video library that will help you out a lot getting started. And life casting is one of those processes that the more you can study that, the better off you'll be, especially studying before you ever smear any kind of of alginate or uh, silicone on another human being. So now our hydrocal is set up and we're ready to demold it and check out the finished nostrils. And one of the other nice things about using a copycat silicone life cast mold is that you also have the advantage of being able to cast clay into this. If you're re-sculpting uh, facial expressions like opening eyes and things like that, copycat works really well with clays like monster clay or alien clay for producing a clay positive. So there is our finished hydrocal positive. And while that's still fairly green, that's when we want to go in and do any cleanup work around any little air bubbles or uh, eyelids and eyebrows and eyelashes, things like that, that might have uh, trapped some little air bubbles, remove those. And you see right out of the mold, we got a really nice clean mold, just a, a few little uh, hydrocal bumps there we're removing. And now ready to, if we were doing prosthetics with this, we're now ready to take that and make a master mold of that face cast. And it's important to remember that no matter how good of a life cast you take off of a subject using silicone, remember that your, your chances of getting a production mold off a living human being are slim. The whole point of the life casting process is to get their features onto your workbench so you can then work with them at your leisure. You want to make sure that you're not extending the life casting process longer than it needs to be to get a perfect cast. Because remember, the first rule of life casting is make sure your subject is happy and comfortable and your friends at the end of the process. Because one of the saddest things is to subject someone to a grueling life cast process just to make sure you get the cast you want and wind up with a very angry actor or actress after the process. Now, as always, live casting supplies are available at our website at brickintheyard.com. And I'm going to link to a couple of the previous videos we've done with Copycat here, so be sure to check those out. But most importantly, be sure to check the links in the video description, especially that link to our uh, video library page that focuses on live casting. I believe we have a beginning live casting and advanced live casting page. So be sure to check those out. And thanks for watching.